This is CBC Here and Now. It's a possibility. The Premier may testify in the Brandon Phillips murder trial. Serial rapist Sofiane Bolag is declared a dangerous offender. Relieved. I have some faith back in the justice system, I think. Are we ready to go, girls? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Let's go. Ryan takes the plunge to get schooled in synchro. The underrated biggest appeal with this sport is you're always inside, so you never have to worry about the weather. And in terms of the weather, the snow has already started in western Labrador, and there's a lot more where this came from. Winter storm warnings are in effect there. It's wind, rain, then snow. The story on the island, the details are coming up. It was a dramatic start today to the first degree murder trial of Brandon Phillips. The jury was shown the surveillance video of the shooting of Larry Wellman at the Captain's Quarters Hotel two years ago. Here now is Fred Hutton is covering this trial and he joins us live now with the latest. Anthony, it was a very emotional start to the trial. After opening statements from the Crown and the defense, the six men and six women of the jury sat motionless as they watched and listened to the surveillance tape taken at the hotel the night Larry Wellman tried to intervene in an armed robbery. Now, we can't show you that video or play the audio, but I can tell you it was disturbing. Wellman and his spouse, Linda McBay, were at the hotel having a drink when a masked man armed with a sawed-off shotgun came in and demanded money. You can hear the, am or the armed man, rather, say, in a profanity-laced tirade, put the money in the bag. The gunman repeats that several times. That's when 63-year-old Larry Wellman stepped in to try to stop the robbery. At this point, the armed man can be heard to say, don't be a hero, buddy. Now, Wellman did not back away. In fact, he picked up a small table and tried to push the suspect back. Wellman's spouse even got between them at some point, pleading with Wellman to stop, saying several times, no, Larry, stop. Well, the gunman can then be heard to say, save your husband, save his life. He then says, hey, buddy, this one's loaded. Listen, how do you want to do this, man? This one's loaded. Now, Wellman then picked up a table and said, you're not going to shoot me, to which the gunman responded, no. Well, Wellman picked up a second table, and you can hear the gun go off just a couple of seconds later. You see Mr. Wellman fall backwards. This did not deter the gunman, as you then hear him say, again with profanity, put the money in the bag, shouting it. He repeats that several times. The gunman can be seen stepping past Wellman, who at this point is on the floor in a pool of blood. The gunman then goes behind the bar to get at the cash register. You can then hear Wellman's spouse say, are you happy now? She also says, he's going to die, repeats his name several times and says, oh my God. Through this, you can also hear Larry Wellman saying quietly, I love you. Now, Larry Wellman died later at hospital. Linda McBay, Larry Wellman's spouse, was one of three people in the hotel that night. She's going to testify at the trial in the morning. All right, and in other development, Fred, we also learned today that Premier Dwight Ball may make an appearance at this trial? Yes, that has changed, actually. Uh, the Premier's connection to this is that his daughter, Jade Ball, was dating accused murderer Brandon Phillips at the time of the shooting. Earlier this week, Dwight Ball said he hadn't been asked to testify, but now that's changed. I'll let you know before uh, you, you find that out uh, from other sources. I think it's the, the per right the professional thing for me to do is to let you as members of the media and, and the people of our province two days ago I said I was I did not receive any notice I did not I received it late this morning now the Crown said today that it's going to call between 15 and 16 witnesses during this trial as for whether or not Jade Ball will have to testify that remains to be seen Anthony thank you Fred he's a coward that's how one of Sofiane Bolag's victims described him today right after he was declared a dangerous offender Bolag is going to prison for an indefinite period of time after being convicted of raping two women and a 15-year-old girl in St. John's. Here now is Glenn Payette has our story. Relieved. I have some faith back in the justice system, I think. They've done the right thing here. Five years ago, she was 15 when Sofiane Bolag raped her and two other women. She's pleased he's going to prison indefinitely. Bolag's lawyer, Jeff Brace, argued that Bolag should get 10 years in prison. Crown prosecutor, Tricia McCarthy, asked that Bolag be declared a dangerous offender. The chief judge of the provincial court, Pamela Golding, agreed, saying, I am not satisfied that there is a reasonable expectation that the public can be adequately protected from Mr. Bolag by a measure less than an indeterminate sentence. During a psychiatric assessment, Boleg blamed his attacks on substance abuse. He's a coward. 
He should have never done what he done, no matter if he was high, drunk, didn't matter. There's always common sense. And she says she is happy she played a role in putting Boleg away. I'm glad I didn't hide in the shadows and not come forward. But she understands why some victims don't come forward. I know you got to find out the truth, and if it is true, but there still should be something that doesn't let you be interrogated down to your sexuality, is what it came down to with me. I was asked my sexuality. It's just some things aren't needed. For a while, the attack had a devastating impact on her. I had suicide attempts. I dropped out of school. There was so much that went on, but I'm now doing a lot better. I don't have those thoughts. I'm doing two degrees, actually, and I'm working full time, and I'm happy. And as for Boleg, he can always try to appeal the dangerous offender ruling. But if it stands, how long he spends in prison will be up to the Parole Board of Canada. He'll be assessed in about two years, and every two years after that, if necessary. Glenn Payette, CBC News, St. John's. Now, as you heard in Glenn's report, one of Bolag's victims was just 15 years of age at the time of the attack. She spoke with reporters following today's verdict about what life has been like in the five years since. And once again, we are protecting the young woman's identity. I had no faith. I was, I was prepared for the worst today, and I was very surprised. Nothing will ever take back what happened to me, but it is a relief, and I have some very strong men in my life that I love with all my heart, especially my pop. I feel a lot safer to know that he won't be back on the streets. There, there's always going to be other people like him out there, but I'm relieved to know that I've, I've aided in him being off the streets. What, what would you like to say to other women who have gone through this and may not have come forward? You're still strong. You still survived. And no matter your decision not to come forward or to come forward, you still have the strength of a million men. The justice system has provided victim services, which I wouldn't be here if they weren't. They have been so great to me, and my victim service rep is amazing. She's been there for five years, and I'm sure I'll still call her up <laughs> and ask her how she's doing. Mm -hmm. But some things that need to change are how victims are treated, because that's a big thing on why people don't step forward, especially with this case, how publicized it was, and how Everyone's seen how we were treated, we were interrogated, and just ripped up ourselves on that stand. And I think there should be something in place that doesn't allow that. To Labrador now, Goose Bay specifically, where the airport is reopening tomorrow, but only for a four-hour window. It's been closed two full days now. The problem is the sealant used to fill cracks on the runway. It's sticking to tires. Here now is Katie Breen was able to take a closer look today and she joins us live. Katie? Hi. Well, yeah, flights are going to be able to come and go between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. tomorrow. Officials say that's in order to give people the ability to move around while still allowing crews time to get out there and do the work they need to do in order to bring the airport back to full capacity. Crews are going through line by line and picking out problematic gunk. Well, the bad stuff, as you can see, you can pick it up, you can remove it with your hands, and it, uh, it has a tacky uh, feeling to it. This is what they're using. There's more equipment on the way, but today, this was the main machine pulling out strips of sealant, stopping every so often to chisel the stuff out of its own wheels. Uh, it, it's a fairly lengthy process, but we seem to be having uh, good luck with our grinder right now, so uh, we're, we're moving ahead. She says crews have been able to remove a large portion of it, but wouldn't give a percentage of just how much work is left. I think the most important thing for us is we have to look at the safety of people, so we are not prepared to, uh, to compromise safety in any way. In the meantime, some people were able to get out or come in today. PAL Airlines and Valet bus people three hours to Churchill Falls. In the meantime, we don't know what the plan is for airlines tomorrow, what they're going to do with that four-hour window, or what's going to happen in the days to come. Live in Happy Valley Goose Bay, I'm Katie Breen for Here and Now.
All right, well, staying with uh, sticky stuff in Labrador, but not <laughs> on the runway. Yeah. They're going to be getting some flaky stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's and a, a storm, hey? Eh? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's definitely the first big winter storm of the season. I mean, when you're talking about winds gusting upwards of 100 kilometers Ooh. per hour and more than 30 centimeters of snow looking set for western parts of Labrador, that's a storm. Uh, and they're already starting to see some of those flakes today. Let's have a look at this beautiful picture. And uh, Debbie Wellen said, loving it and can't wait for more, of course, at the Minahec, uh, uh Nordic Ski Club, where, yeah, of course, they're going to love the snow, and everybody loves the snow in western parts of Labrador, where we have the winter storm warning in effect. Now, special weather statements in effect for Churchill Falls, Happy Valley Goose Bay, and the coast of Labrador. Wouldn't be surprised if we get into some of those warnings tomorrow for these regions. Uh, wind warnings in effect for western Newfoundland, and a wreck house wind warning in effect as well, because the winds are going to strengthen here uh, for the, the southwest coast. That rain on the Avalon clears through this evening. It's a pretty quiet start to Friday for most of us, the exception being Western Labrador, where, yes, the snow continues tonight, a couple more centimeters, 5 to 10 centimeters on the menu through the day tomorrow in western parts of Labrador. And again, Friday afternoon starting to get into those showers, even some steadier periods of rain into the evening and overnight, and that all swings through for Friday night across the island with some gusty winds. Of course, Saturday, big focus on Remembrance Day, and we're going to be seeing some very gusty winds across the island, some onshore flurries and squalls for the west coast, and the snow and wind continue across Labrador. We'll dive into your complete weekend story with the next three days coming up in just a few minutes. Anthony? Thanks, Ryan. The taxi industry is getting a boost from the province to better train its drivers. It's also an attempt to improve the industry's public image. $52,000 is going to the Newfoundland and Labrador Taxi Alliance. The money is expected to go towards sensitivity, first aid and driver training. During a meeting with the government, the alliance asked that drivers have a minimum of five years of Canadian driver experience before being issued a taxi license. The association says it hopes the province will listen to its suggestions. Well, we'll know exactly how broke Newfoundland and Labrador is in just a few days. The provincial government will release a financial update on Tuesday. It's coming midway through the fiscal year. The update follows last month's warning from the retiring Auditor General that the province's $1.1 billion deficit is not sustainable. After a lot of back and forth, the province's environment minister has ordered an environmental impact statement for a controversial salmon farm proposed for Placentia Bay. Grieg Aquaculture will work with the province now and an environmental assessment will uh, be done. A committee will determine the impact of the quarter billion dollar project to see what impact it will have on the environment and the economy. The Atlantic Salmon Federation has long voiced concerns over open pen salmon farming and its effect on the wild salmon population. And in July, a Supreme Court judge overturned the province's decision to release the project from any further environmental assessment. Though Minister Eddie Joyce ordered the assessment, he told reporters today the province still plans to appeal to the Supreme Court ruling to learn what environmental regulations the province may have overlooked. Well, now to a story of a young arthritis patient in this province who's giving back to the group that helped her. Mm. Her name is Maya Healy, and she raised thousands of dollars for the Arthritis Society. But as here and now's Garrett Barry reports, she couldn't do it without sister power. Maya and Lily Healy, sisters, best friends, and the driving force behind the fundraising group Sister Power. It's wonderful to see that they can both do this together and that Lily is so willing to help Maya in any way that she can, um, both with physical challenges and with fundraising as well. Maya is shy speaking with strangers, so Lily is Sister Power's official spokesperson. What does the Arthritis Society do? help people get better. And why is it important to help people get better? So they can someday be like us. Maya was diagnosed with arthritis when she was two. It means sore joints and inflammation behind her eye. And it's hard for her to keep up with her classmates. You know, as a parent, it's frustrating because you want to do everything you can for your child. And, you know, this is something that's beyond my control. I can't I can't fix it. <laughs> but she's getting a chance to help now. Her workplace, the medicine shop in Grand Falls, Windsor, is giving Sister Power a boost. One dollar for each flu shot given out. It's a small pharmacy we work in. We, we work a lot of hours together. Um, so we, we've gotten to know each other over the past ten months. And, you know, I, I see how passionate Mandy is about uh, juvenile arthritis and the, all the work that they, 
that her and her daughters put into Sister Power, and I, you know, I thought it was the least I could do. Together, the girls have raised over ten thousand dollars since 2015. They've held auctions and raffled a quilt, all in an effort to give back to the Arthritis Society. What I hope it means to them is a sense that, you know, they belong to something bigger. They're a part of changing the way people look at arthritis. That $10,000 figure is sure to grow because the Healy Girls already have more fundraisers planned for the coming year. They're going to find out just how far Sister Power will take them. Garrick Barry, CBC News, Gander. Oh, congratulations nice. to Maya and Lily, and go Sister Power. Yep, <laughs> looks like it's working. <laughs> Coming up on Here and Now, we're jumping in the pool with the St. John's Synchronized Swimming Club. Welcome back, everyone, and voila! Yes. <laughs> uh, make sure they're up. You should have worn yeah. them in the pool, I not here at well, the desk. <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty, Debbie. Yeah. And uh, yeah, after my uh, synchronized swimming, uh, I thought uh, really these would have come in handy. So I'm amazed you could get them around your meteorology biceps. Uh, <laughs> or you could put them on under your jacket and look really buff. Yeah, I should have done that. I should have done that. Yeah, no, I've got two kids, Anthony. I haven't been to the gym in months. Uh, so anyway, you know, I've had a lot of invites. I've 
been invited to jump in the North Atlantic, did that. Been invited to go iceberg hunting, did that. Uh, had never been invited to go synchronized swimming. I wonder there, why. Yeah, very, very few men have been. It's an, yeah. honor. It's an honor. It's yeah, true. So um, I I've, had to dive in. Have a look. There's been synchronized swimming clubs here in St. John since the 1960s, and today I get to meet and swim with the latest crew, the Sea Stars. Okay, almost pool time. Olivia, how long have you been synchronized swimming? Just until last October. What do you like about it? That we get to go in the water. That you get to go in the water. So you just love being in the pool. Yep. So first thing, I guess I, I need the proper attire. What is this thing called? It's a cap for your head. A cap. It's not a hat, it's a cap? Yep. Okay. Yep. Are we ready to go, girls? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Let's go. All right, girls, we're going to try doing an egg beater boost first. Okay, you lower your body first and then you whip your legs together so that you shoot straight up in the air. Not too bad. Okay, we're gonna try a back layout and then a tub position. So you're gonna float on your back, squeeze your feet together, and then you're gonna pull your shins in, so like your little bathtub. You got it, okay. And we can add on to that and make it a little more difficult. Go upside down. Upside down? Upside down. <laughs> so to show Ryan what a back tuck somersault looks like. Now she can do it really easily, that's yeah. true. It hurts her. <laughs> what happens if you swallow half the pool? <coughs> it's kind of like doing something else. Like your, your feet will kind of be circling. So try and stay up close to you. She should be the coach. Uh so, Shannon, uh, those were just a couple of the basic moves. Yep. Very basic. Very basic. Thank you for that. Uh, obviously, you know when we see synchronized swimming on TV, it's very, very intricate, uh, very difficult. Yeah. Is that one of the reasons that maybe recruitment is uh, is a little more difficult because everybody thinks this sport is so hard? I think that's a big part of it, as well as it's, it's one of those niche sports you don't see it all the time on TV, like hockey and soccer and even speed swimming sometimes. Um, and once you get it, you love it. Once you're in, you're in. <laughs> So the kids that fall in love with it, they, they can't leave. Perhaps the underrated biggest appeal with this sport is you're always inside. So you never have to worry about the weather. No, you don't. It's, uh, yes. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. Up. Yep, you're going to have practice. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. That only took about five takes. <laughs> Now you have a, yeah. an appreciation for synchro swimming. They were sort of watching you really put the sink in synchro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it, I knew it was going to be difficult. It was even more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, they're very fit, right? I mean, that's quite the workout. Yeah, for sure. Right? An all new appreciation. Now, as we mentioned, it's, it's kind of a, a sport that's hard to recruit, and so they're trying to recruit. And so uh, what they're doing is this weekend they're offering free lessons uh, to come out and give it a try and over at the Aqua Arena Saturday at 4 p.m. and then Sunday at 9.40 a.m. and then again Tuesday uh, from uh, 3.30 and all classes as I said are at the Aqua Arena and uh, anybody's welcome. So nice. It's fantastic. And give it a try yeah. as I did uh, and if I did anybody <laughs> can. <laughs> I think I'll take a pass. Yeah. I know how hard you it is. You can borrow my water wheels if you want, Debbie. <laughs> this weather update is brought to you by the Take Charge Business Efficiency Program. Over 400 businesses have saved energy and taken charge of their bottom line. Find out how you can too. All right. So uh, from the pool to the snow, and we have a lot of snow coming for western parts of Labrador. 
This is just one particular forecast model, but the other, the American forecast model, pretty much on par with this, and the Canadian's not far off this either. And we are talking about snowfall by the time we get through to Sunday morning uh, in that 30 to 50 centimeter projection from western parts of Labrador towards uh, the coast of Labrador, named down through Hopedale and Makovic. I think Happy Valley Goose Bay is probably going to land closer to 10 to 15 centimeters based on the latest projections is a little bit of mixing. Temperatures a little bit warmer there, uh, but boy, this is going to be a big event for western parts of Labrador. Not sure we'll make it to 50, but certainly north of 30, looking like a pretty good possibility right now. It's thanks to this system, which is rolling out of the Great Lakes and yeah, has already been building that cloud cover in today and a bit of light snow. The other story we've been watching is the rain and it has been a soaking day here across the Avalon Peninsula. That rain will depart through this evening and into the overnight and it's a pretty quiet start to Friday as you see that rain departing uh, through this evening. Friday, a little on the breezy side again with northerly winds in through uh, St. John's Bonavista. It's a quiet start for the rest of the island. And again, that snow tonight, couple centimeters of accumulation for you folks in western Labrador, minus four year temperature. Should be around the minus four to minus five range. So another uh, windshield scraping morning for parts of western and central Newfoundland. And we'll be close to the freezing mark across St. John's and the east. Now, through the day tomorrow, note that cloud really thickens up by 5 p.m. We're looking at a couple of shower possibilities up towards central, the Buren Peninsula, but it's the west coast where we're going to be seeing those periods of rain sneaking in and some gusts in the 60, 70, 80 kilometer per hour range. Wreck house under that wind warning, as I mentioned, gust to 110 there. And that snow and wind really ramping up uh, through the afternoon in western parts of Labrador. 8 to 10 degrees over the southwest, 4 to 6 degrees, maybe 7 uh, for the northeast and into the east with, again, those building clouds. And we are looking at that snow with another 5 to 10 centimeters on the menu for tomorrow for Labrador City and maybe as much as 5 centimeters for Churchill Falls. Now watch your timeline here. Friday night is when we'll see that heaviest rain pushing through east, uh, most of Newfoundland. By Saturday morning, the rain is gone. Uh, but the winds, unfortunately, are just getting started, and we're going to be seeing those winds shift to southwesterly. Note the time. This is 11 a.m. Saturday morning, Remembrance Day ceremonies, and those are some very strong winds. Gusts in the 60, 70, even 80 kilometer per hour range, I think will be dry in the east and the northeast and central. Flurry chances along the west coast and certainly all, uh, along the south coast and certainly along the west coast where onshore flurries and some squalls on the go. That snow and wind continues in Labrador. Uh, winds not so bad in the morning in the southeast, but really ramping up into the afternoon, the later parts of the day. Temperatures near minus nine, so it's going to be a cold and blustery one with again those gusts upwards of 90 in the west and uh, winds really picking up through the day and into the evening hours for the east. Temperatures in the four or five degree range for central and eastern parts of Newfoundland and minus two in, uh, in, uh, for along the west coast. The good news is winds will ease as we move into Sunday. And just to give you a quick little look there, uh, a brighter, certainly cool day, but uh, winds starting to ease off. We'll have a closer look at this and of course right into next week with your seven day in just a few minutes. Jonathan Park was stabbed 12 times just off of Broadway here in Cornerbrook over two years ago. Now the two men involved finally know their fate. I'll tell you what happened in Supreme Court today. That's coming up next.
every cause needs a champion. And for the Autism Society of Newfoundland and Labrador, that champion is Elaine Dobbin. 19 years ago, Elaine began work to help plan the new Autism Centre. Through her dedication and passion, Elaine and her Capital Campaign Committee successfully raised $2 million, and the Elaine Dobbin Centre for Autism opened in 2006. As honorary board member and patron of the Autism Society of Newfoundland and Labrador, Elaine continues to play an active role as an advocate for people with autism. Elaine also gives her time, passion and dedication to advance numerous other health and education initiatives in this province. Welcome back. Well, two Cornerbrook men will spend serious time in jail after stabbing Jonathan Park 12 times with a knife. Dylan Bourgeois and Paxton Shehan were charged after the violent altercation happened more than two years ago. Today, the two accused learned their fate. Here now's Colleen Connors tells us what happened. Today, just behind these doors, Paxton and Dylan, well, they sat together, waiting to hear how long they would be in prison. The two have been in separate jails in separate towns for two years now. These two sat together, talking, whispering, avoiding the cameras, while they waited to hear how much longer they would be behind bars. The judge in this case agreed with the Crown's suggestion for five years for Bourgeois and three for Shahan. Bourgeois had the knife and stabbed Park behind a grocery store near Broadway late October 2015. Shahan restrained Park as he was stabbed 12 times. He needed 52 staples and four stitches to heal wounds on his upper body. In February, the pair pleaded not guilty to attempted murder, but on Tuesday, both men changed their pleas to guilty of aggravated assault. The Crown then dropped their attempted murder charges. Justice Handrigan says the two showed little remorse and didn't say anything during the sentencing hearing. He says they did not show a good chance of rehabilitation. Park's family filled the courtroom, watching the two accused while the judge gave his decision. Shahan and Bourgeois avoided their eyes and looked away. Now both men will each get 1.5 days credit for every day already served behind bars. Now that breaks down to Shahan having to serve about a year and four months behind bars, where Bourgeois will face a little less than two years in prison. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Corner Brook. From a sealer and trapper in Labrador to a sniper in the First World War, John Shywalk was killed in France 100 years ago this month, a member of the Newfoundland Regiment. The Inuk soldier's story is remarkable, and yet Shywalk is not well known. Now that's changing. Chris O'Neill Yates reports. At this exhibition dedicated to the First World War, an Inuk soldier from Rigolette, Labrador, holds a special place among the faces of valor. He was a really, really good shot, and he just had that ability to be a really, really good sniper from his experiences growing up in Labrador. And he often compared sniping seals on the ice to sniping the Germans. From the pages of his regimental file, John Shywalk springs to life for historian Kevin Major. He's a fascinating character. At just 10 years old, Shywalk left school but he had eclectic interests, perhaps because of his work with the medical charity Grenville Mission. He was supposedly a bit of an artist. He liked to draw with watercolors. Uh, he was a bit of a poet, we know, and he kept diaries. Shywalk had a love of nice clothes, and at 27, while training in Scotland, had this portrait taken. But in war, frivolity had no place and Shywalk became celebrated by one report as the best sniper in the British Army. Apparently he had quite a number of notches uh, carved into his, uh, into his rifle. By some accounts, as many as 100, one for each enemy soldier he killed. At 5 feet 5 inches, weighing just 132 pounds, Shywalk stealthily slipped into German camps at night to gather intelligence. For his family, though, little was known about the soldier who never came home. There seems to be a real thirst for information, Uncle John, so it keeps me learning more about him all the time. 
Shywalk enlisted a year after the devastating losses of men at Beaumont Hamill. He was decorated as a scout and sniper, but wrote to a friend that he had become weary of the hellishness of war. The young man who longed for adventure died in the French village of Masnières 100 years ago on November 20th. He and six of his fellow soldiers were killed when a German shell dropped right on top of them. After the enormity of the loss at Beaumont Hamill, Shywalk and his comrades are often forgotten, says Major. But died equally as tragically as anybody who died, of course, in the, in the, in the Battle of Beaumont Hamill or any other battle in which the Newfoundland Regiment was involved. It's very important. Uh, I take a lot of pride in what he done and his, the sacrifice he made. Now, a hundred years later, Shywalk is finally getting the recognition he deserves, the shy sniper from Labrador. Chris O'Neill Yates, CBC News, St. John's. And up next, we'll introduce you to a 95-year-old Newfoundlander who remembers in detail his wartime years. He helped drive German troops out of North Africa and Italy. The Keogh's annual Lobster Fest on Newfoundland time in Ontario. Sunday at 12.30 and Monday at 7. Welcome back. Just a few years ago, World War II vet Wes Oak jumped out of a plane and raised more than $30,000 for Gander's Memorial Park. And we brought you his story back then. Well, today at 95 years old, he's still very active in the community. CBC producer Angela Antle caught up with the Reverend Wesley Oak to ask him about his wartime experiences with the 166th Newfoundland Field Regiment Royal Artillery. The Newfoundlanders helped the British 8th Army push German troops out of North Africa and Italy. Wes Oak still vividly remembers everything. One of Reverend then Gunner Oak's most vivid memories of Italy was the time he came close to being court-martialed for disobeying a command to shoot intruders. And I saw this person coming out of the cave up in the mountain. 
I could see that it was a, a female, a woman, you had to shout halt. After you shout that three times, I was trained and we had to do it. We had to disable them, shoot, you know. She didn't stop, she came on. I, I never I never used my weapon. So she came up and where I was standing, there was a big burrow, a, a oil drum actually that we used to use for put garbage in, you know, throw the garbage in. And she came up to that and she put her hands down, look, picked me over looking for something to eat. So I reached for my emergency rations and I took it out and gave it to her. And when I gave it to her, it was a chocolate piece. She looked up at me and smiled. So then the military police arrived and arrested me and took me to the guardhouse. The next morning I went before the commander officer. He said, Gunner Oak, he said, you know what can happen to you. And I said, yes, sir, I do. And he said, you disobeyed the, the command. I said, yes. And I said, I was thinking of my mother. I couldn't do it. And he was sitting behind his desk. And he, he rose up and he did like that and took a tear from his eyes. He said, I'm thinking of my mother now. And then he said, you're free, there's no charge. Is it then something? The 166th Regiment was part of Montgomery's bold wish to make a colossal crack in the German defenses at the Sangro River. While the Germans blew up bridges and retreated to the hills, November rains turned the entire Sangro Valley into mud, and driver Wes Oak got stuck. Mud was up to your waist in some places, you know. And I was backing in this particular gun at this time and, that, and got stuck in the mud, you know. And I don't know, God forgive me, delaying me, shall we say? <laughs> and so finally, we had ways to jack it in, you know, with cables and get it out. But the beautiful thing about it was, I looked and I saw a Salvation Army officer, just, and he was up to his knees in mud, and he was to reach me with a cup of coffee. I'll never forget it. They were real salvation that day. <laughs> <laughs> they were. Yeah. During the winter of 1944, the Newfoundlanders were dug in in the snowy mountains south of Bologna. Christmas 1944, we were fighting up in the Mount Soli position in Italy. We were there all the winter, dug in, and cold snowed in, you know. And I had a duty to perform and I looked I saw this down there and this was a mother with a baby her baby wrapped up in their arms dead frozen in the snow both of them that's about the worst thing I had to contend with while I was in the war you know is to get over that, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'll tell you another thing. Uh, in uh, that year, 1944, when we were up in the, the uh, Mount Soli position, mm -hmm. in May, my birthday is the 31st day of May. Surgeon Gallagher, he's from St. John's, he was the surgeon in charge of the RHQ. He said to me, there's a telegram here from you. And he said, I think it's probably a birthday greeting. I said, what? Well, he passed it. Now I'm going to be crying. <laughs> he passed it 
over to me, and I opened it. It was a, a telegram from my darling. Oh. And she was in corner books. It must have cost her a month's wages to get that telegram to me. And that was unbelievable. Yeah. And I never, never forgot. And I still love the telegram. And how long have you been married? We've been married on, on September the 25th, 2017. We celebrated our 70th wedding anniversary. So it was a good investment, that telegram. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you made a good investment. <laughs> For Here and Now, I'm Angela Antle. Wow. What a remarkable that man, Reverend Wesley stories. Oak. I'm so glad we can hear his story and stories of others who yeah. are still with us. Really wonderful. And I think we have a contender for one of the longest happies from Fridays, too. <laughs> That's true. Congratulations. <laughs> well, staying with the past and history, how is this for a bit of hidden history? Curators at a Kansas City museum say they've found a tiny grasshopper in the Vincent van Gogh painting. It's called Olive Trees. Now, not a painted insect, an actual <laughs> grasshopper. Oh, my goodness. Van Gogh liked to paint outside, so it's uh, only a short leap to guess how the bug became embedded in the paint. We know Olive Trees was created in 1880 now, uh, 89, and now curators are hoping they can study the insect, pinpoint which season Van Gogh completed this work. Time to meet our young athlete of the day. This is Sophia Hatch of Wadwick. And she's seven years old and plays novice at sea hockey, soccer, and swimming. Uh, way to keep active, Sophia. You are today's young athlete of the day. <laughs> Didn't mention synchronized swimming, just swimming. No, no, that's right. I still right. can't believe you did that. <laughs> Uh, I can't really believe I did it either. I said to him, how come you didn't have nose plugs on going upside down like that? I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I tried to put it on and I couldn't figure it out and boy, I paid for it. I swallowed so much chlorine water that day. 
Uh, anyway, it was a great time. Nice piece, too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, it's hard to believe we're already here. I know fall is a long transition season, but when you're talking about the first winter storm warnings of the season, winter is definitely coming. And uh, wind warnings again for the West Coast for tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. And as we take a look into uh, the rec house area, gusts up to 110 there. It is, uh, and special weather statements also in effect uh, for Happy Valley Goose Bay, Churchill Falls, and the coast of Labrador. Wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow by tomorrow uh, we have uh, winter storm warnings also in effect for coastal Labrador, given the heavy snow on the way there and some strong winds. This is the low pulling out of the Great Lakes. Uh, some very uh, cold air sinking into that neck of the woods as well. Uh, cold air alerts already in effect for the city of Toronto. Minus 20 wind chills over the next 24 hours or so. Now watch as we move into the year uh, Friday morning time period. The rain departs. We are looking at by Friday morning, a pretty quiet start across the island. Labrador under uh, already into some of that snow and it really fills out into the afternoon. Now watch your timeline here. Friday, not a bad day, but by Friday evening, any Friday evening plans should include the umbrella or at least a raincoat for pretty much everybody. Uh, we are going to be seeing snow into Happy Valley Goose Bay, and this is when the snow will become at times heaviest for Labrador City and Churchill Falls. Some very strong winds here, gusts 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. Not quite as strong as the winds will be on Saturday morning as they come in from the northwest and gust upwards of 90 to even 100 kilometer per hour uh, gusts. Saturday morning, as I mentioned, for the Avalon, the Buren, Clarenville, Bonavista towards central Newfoundland. I think it's a dry Remembrance Day uh, in terms of those ceremonies, but boy, the wind is really going to be coming in from the southwest. Gusts 70, 80 kilometer per hour uh, gusts along that uh, northeast coast, the south coast, and also the west coast of the island. Note uh, some flurries uh, possible along the Buren Peninsula and not even ruling out a flurry chance in the metro region by Saturday evening. Snow and blow continue along the coast of Labrador into Saturday evening and then depart as we move into Sunday, which is a much quieter day. I think we will see some sun kicking up across uh, eastern parts, uh, all across Newfoundland, that is, with, uh, again, flurries lingering into uh, Labrador. So there's a quick look at the next three in case you missed it. And I uh, do want to focus, again, on Remembrance Day. Hopefully I can, in 24 hours from now, drop those winds a little bit, but the potential certainly there along the coast of Newfoundland for gust to 80. Uh, southeastern Labrador will get into the strongest gust later Saturday, so I'm only topping it at 70 right now. But uh, again, western Labrador, very stormy as well. Quick look into next week. We're talking about that, that midweek potential storm for next week. Well, the latest idea has this area of high pressure uh, keeping that system to the south, at least into the Thursday time period. So uh, a little bit better of a Tuesday, Wednesday shaping up at this point. Certainly still a little on the cool side. Into the Labrador, again, pretty cool shot coming for next next week. Thanks, uh, Ryan. Now, turning to national and uh, international news, the uh, Liberal government has announced extended parental benefits. New parents will have the option of staying home for as long as 18 months. The extended benefits come into effect next month. There's no additional money in the plan. Parents will be given the option of spreading their benefits out over a longer period, so they would get less per month. There are also changes before the baby is born. Benefits can kick in up to 12 weeks before the birth instead of eight. Canadians are marking the 100th anniversary of one of the most horrific battles for Canada during the First World War. It's the Battle of Passchendaele. Tributes and ceremonies are taking place in Belgium ahead of this Remembrance Day weekend. It was a century ago that more than 4,000 Canadians died and 12,000 were wounded trying to take Passchendaele Ridge from the Germans. Despite the bloodbath, the mission was a success, but the battle became a symbol of the madness of the war to end all wars. Okay, our viewer picture of the day. It's another beauty, another sunset pic. Uh, What's the best clue for this? South coast, I'll give you that much. Uh, from taking on along the south coast, and uh, but I'll leave you with that. We'll have a reveal after the break. Lots of color, like a Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. No grasshopper. <laughs>
Well, an Alberta owl is attracting plenty of attention for being the doppelganger of a famous feathered friend. Wildlife biologist Satara Fernando rescued this snowy, gorgeous snowy owl from oil Beauty. sands near Fort McMurray, and it quickly cast a spell. <laughs> it seems it's a dead ringer for Harry Potter's mail-delivering pet, Hedwig. Fernando listened to the Philosopher's Stone on audiobook on her drive back to Edmonton, and she says the experience was nothing short of magic. <laughs> well, there's no escaping it, as we've talked about the last couple of days. Winter is coming, and here's a sure sign of it in Ottawa. Crews there are getting the Rideau Canal ready for the skating season, and they were putting the concession stands in place yesterday. Beaver tail, right? You can't, yeah. You can't resist that fat thing of dough after a good skate. It's you, a beautiful spot. You probably tucked into a few of those when you lived and worked in so, Ottawa. Are, are you talking about my body or yeah. about the fact that I lived in Ottawa? <laughs> Great place to skate. Yes. Wonderful place. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, Banneran Park uh, will be open soon enough, and they have beaver tails there. Remember last year That's I went true. live, yeah. and uh, beaver tails uh, were better than the skating. Yeah. You've got to do, do the loop a few times to burn off a That's beaver tail. True. That's true. That's why it's good. there. Yeah. Uh, quick look at our, our, viewer picture, our viewer picture of the day, and uh, this is, uh, again, another beauty. Any guesses? Uh, France way. Oh, that's a good guess. Oh, really? Uh, not I haven't got an idea. Not <laughs> far to the east, anyway, uh, but it is uh, down towards Hermitage oh. and Sandyville. Nice. Uh, was the uh, beautiful spot there. And a big thank you uh, to everybody who's been contributing lately on my Facebook page. Wesley Harris was uh, this shot in Conegra Bay there. Uh, gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Yep. You know, I kind of drew one like that as a kid. <laughs> oh, no, more <laughs> art coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Have a great night. Good night. Good night.